All right, thanks. Uh, thank you all for uh, for joining. And I see some familiar faces, some uh, some new faces. I hope to see uh, even more faces uh, in this series of webinar that we're starting today, uh, together with uh, with Stuart, my co-host today. Uh, hi, Stuart. Uh, so just to give you a bit of uh, introduction about this webinar. Uh, today, we're going to focus on corporate startup collaboration, how we uh, drive business growth and uh, drive innovation through these uh, innovation methodologies. That is just one part of, uh, of, a, big, uh, of a big subject that we, we want to explore through a series of webinars. This is the first one. So uh, hopefully, we're going to see you in the next ones. And please also. Uh, I will ask you later to interact with some Menti question. Interact because we are going to make this uh, uh, webinar series of webinar tailored to what you actually would like to hear. Uh, but without further ado, let's introduce uh, a bit who is uh, going to talk today. Uh, I'm Giulia Falcone. I'm program manager at Startup Bootcamp here in the Netherlands. Um, I'm program manager for the programs we run actually with our corporate clients. So I'm specialized in um, helping our startup collaborate with other corporate clients that um, that needs to uh, enhance innovation through corporate startup collaboration. And we're going to talk about it today. And uh, Stuart. Hey, thanks, Julia. Um, Stuart Allenson, I'm Energy Transition Partner with Startup Bootcamp. Most of my career is based been based around energy, and of course, since sort of 90s, that's been a clean tech story. Uh, I did find my own startup that we listed on the stock exchange here in Australia in 2017, and since then, I've worked with over 100 um, startups across various programs, probably 80% clean tech but also in fintech and prop tech. So I've learned an awful lot in the last three years, Julia. Yes. And actually, uh, the startup I work with, they are more focused on uh, FMCG. So nice to have to this, uh, this mix between the, the two of us. Um, so I know some people here, uh, they know very well Startup Bootcamp. I see some familiar faces again. But uh, for the one that don't know us yet, uh, you can also go in our website later and discover more about us. I'm going to just give a bit of background information of why we're experts about startups, but also about uh, driving innovation. So we are a startup accelerator and um, founded in 2010. Since then, we have invested in more than 1,600 startups, resulting in a portfolio with a value of more than 5 billion. Uh, we have been growing into one of the leading world accelerator and the first accelerator in Europe. But we not only have our uh, program, we not only invest in our startup, we also help startup collaborate with corporates and we help corporates collaborate uh, with startups. Since 2010, we count more than 400 product and service ideated, more than 1,500 startup investment from corporates to, to startup, of course, and more than 400 uh, proof of concept supported. So today we're going to focus on corporate startup collaboration, but we at Startup Bootcamp cover the whole of the innovation journey that a corporate can uh you know can have with the external entities um as i said before is a multifaceted subject and i would like you now to join the menti here uh scan the qr code and let us know a little bit of what are the other topics that would you like to see covered in our next webinar all about innovation. I'm going to collect them and maybe we're going to uh, talk about it later. And I'm going to make sure we uh, we will cover this topic into our next webinar. And by the way, um, during the during the webinar, you can scan, you can still keep the QR code open and I'm going to collect questions through the uh, Menti. So whenever you want to ask us anything, you can uh, go back to the Menti and you will have an open, um, an open spot for, for questions. Yeah. I will also copy the link of the Menti into the chat. So you will be able to 
to interact. Yeah, but while while we're doing that, Julia, I just I just my comment. The Rubik's cube is such a powerful image for me that um, having worked from like ideation through to seed investment, so we specialize in pre-series A up to pre-series A. There's so many parts that can go wrong, and I think that's not only the risk, but it's also the fascination really with with corporate startup collaboration. That uh, I think there's everybody's innovation journey is unique, but I think there's some common threads and some learnings we can hopefully can distill in this uh, in this conversation. Yes, moving forward. So I move the Menti to the uh, to the question spot. But please, uh, anytime you think about a topic that you would like to to cover, maybe you can also write it in the in the chat. All right. Uh, moving on. Um, here, just a bit of uh, background information. What is actually uh, open innovation? What we define open innovation? Uh, many of you may already know. I just want to give here a definition for all of us to be on the same page. Um, open innovation is a business strategy that encourages companies to look you know, beyond internal resources and collaborate with external partners. They can be startups, they can be university, they even can be uh, competitors. And unlike traditional innovation that relies, you know, on uh, Hinaus R&D, uh, open innovation taps in a global talents of emerging technologies, bringing fresh ideas to innovation game, helping corporates staying ahead of the curve, hopefully accelerating development of product services and business model in a faster way than developing in-house. So again, today we focus on one specific, uh, one specific uh, way of collaborating with uh, with startup with with external entities, um, which is corporate startup collaboration. But there are there are many ways to get creative to collaborate with external entities and startups. First of all, you have acquisition, of course, M and A. Uh, activity involving uh, acquiring a firm and integrate its technology. We have many examples uh, today on the market of you know big tech acquiring uh, small startup, you know, enhancing. Now we see a lot of AI, a lot of AI uh, startup being acquired uh, by big tech company in order to enhance this uh, side of the business. Then uh, our actually. Uh, strength, a startup bootcamp, POC pilot program. Uh, we count uh, a lot of uh, proof of concept program. I am program manager myself in uh, many of those that we run with our FMCG, uh, FMCG client. Usually a proof of concept, uh, proof of concept program uh, involves uh, creating and testing a new idea or a technology for a small amount of time in a small scale before full scale implementation. And I think it's very useful for a corporate to build trust. So uh, the goal of running a proof of concept program is, you know, corporate don't know very well the, the startup. They don't want to engage in a full scale commercial integration yet. So we run a small project that is usually two to three months long. And so the startup can prove the value, can prove uh, the functionalities of the of the technology in a short amount of time and uh, some of uh, some of the POC they become pilots some of the POC become extended commercial integration some of them of course is not a fit so we need to accept that you know sometimes when a startup don't you know, don't uh, uh, the, the POC is not fully fully successful. This is why we run POC. This is why we run small. This is because we can fail cheap, and we don't have to invest huge amount of money into collaboration that are not, uh, you know, uh, strategic. Talking about strategy, we also have a strategic partnership in, uh, as open innovation model. So, to organization just collaborating on a specific project or goal. And last, we have joint development, uh, where our joint venture. So, two corporations, two startups, they just work to add together to develop a specific product uh, or a specific technology, just sharing resources and expertise. So, it's like the ownership of uh, the output is joint. Um, now, 
I don't know if Stuart, you want to you want to add anything on that. Um, I, 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 yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Just to just to say that um, you know we've separated out corporate innovation. We work with a lot of brands behind the scenes confidentially. The bits that you see are the sort of public face, the startups, and that's that's what we'll focus on. Little known fact, we also do venture design work as well. So the whole spectrum, and that's why we're interested to hear areas that you want to drill down in subsequent webinars. But just coming back to that corporate startup collaboration, which has some insights of its own, but maybe some insights for those other aspects as well. Um, so here, actually, I would like to um, pose a question. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give my definition, but maybe if you have uh, any any input you would like to share, please uh, just write in the chat or uh, I'm going to leave some time for, uh, for for input and unmute yourself and give me some input. Uh, what are the benefits of open? Uh, of from open innovation how can you benefit and here i'm going to give a bit of uh, what is for me uh what are for me the benefits and what i see for our corporate clients are the benefit but uh, maybe you can also here give some input uh, either you're a founder you are uh you're a corporate professional or uh, even part of the innovation ecosystem what do you believe uh is the benefit of open innovation versus a traditional you know internal innovation way so first up driving technical innovation in the sense that as i said before uh partnering with external entities can help uh, corporate being ahead of the um, innovation curve so adding fresh ideas to the innovation game uh sometimes uh, corporates are a bit unburned uh, burned by bureaucracy and uh, decision times are very long and i see that by partnering with external entity uh, you can you know discover new uh, new technologies new things in a faster way than uh, it's just uh, then then developing inside and this of course leads to flexibility adaptability it's much more quicker and to adapt and also pivot by using external solution rather than developing ones from scratch and then this also of course leads to the third one because by being able to pivot by being able to change by being able to also don't develop full things uh through your r d department and developing using an ex existing technology um this of course helps reducing r d cost and also reducing the risk um, of course, by innovating and I think uh, keeping all of uh, uh, all, all of these um, elements in place, uh, the ultimate goal that we we always uh, we always hope for our client, we always hope for our startup is gain a competitive advantage. This is the reason why uh, we support our corporate clients, collaborate with startup, and this is the reason why uh, I mean this is the ultimate goal for a startup accelerator like us uh, when we do help a corporate collaborate with one of our portfolio company but also an external startup uh, anything from um, the uh, crowd that you would like to share um, about what are the benefits of uh, open innovation according to your experience And maybe Stuart here, you can uh, you can give yeah. your own uh, experience. There's some yeah, as people think that through, there's there's some things that I didn't think when we first got into this, and I'm talking three four years ago, and maybe just two examples. One is really fine, even with internal corporate innovation teams. You know, that's an area of risk where people can get very inwardly focused. So we've been able to um, supplement um, internal teams and looking globally through AI enabled um, searching and identified solutions that nobody was aware of. And, and our searches are really powerful. We recently do a, did an ex, ex, exercise with a food production company, very, very specialist area complemented what the internal teams were, were finding. 
And the other one, which is a little bit more uh, intangible, a little, little bit more uh, conceptual, is getting organizations much more comfortable with uncertainty and risk taking in a very controlled way. And I think, I think that's part of the magic of collaborating with startups is going on that journey together. We can talk more about that. And I mean, we, we talked a bit about, about benefits, but to, uh, of course, collaborating with a small entity, being a corporate has, uh, you know, his, his challenges and hurdles. And I think we have seen a lot over the years and it's not always easy. And that's why for corporate it's very important to collaborate with a partner like, uh, like us uh, that can facilitate the, co the collaboration. Uh, I mean, I can give uh, thousands of examples of, uh, you know, some, uh, I like to, I, I like to say that uh, startups and corporates, sometimes they speak two different languages and also they have complete different timelines uh, for things to be done. Uh, um, you know, the startups are very, very fast and every decision just maybe takes uh, hours of minutes and they expect the other counterpart to have the same pace. When they realize that in order to provide an answer or provide data to develop their POC, to be able to, to advance, there, there has to be five layers of approval because you need to go through five layers of approval and this requires weeks. They start like uh, the, the then is the moment where you need to you need to really translate. Uh, yeah, don't worry, everything is moving forward. It's just these are the time for a big corporations. Uh, these are the times that you need to to wait in order to be able to receive this data. It doesn't require just a click as for you. So these are sometimes the uh, you you know one of the biggest hurdles I had in my at least in uh, one of my latest uh, program. Uh, I think here, um, Stuart, you have a, a few examples you may want to you may want to make about usual usual hurdles. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Julia. And I was I was actually presenting at the. Um, World Economic Forum in um, Saigon last week, and and it really, when you sit down to reflect on this, it makes you really think. What's at the heart of this? I'm gonna I'm gonna expand on lots of facets that Julia and I have, have discussed, but at the heart of it, there is this collaborative journey that is built on trust and staged progress, and and I would just I'll use the analogy if you'll forgive it. It's a rather simple one, but a good idea can be like a child and if the village raises it it can be successful but it can without the right support become an orphan and so we we see some brilliant things that don't cross that chasm to commercial success so that's at the heart of it but i want to sort of distill it out in terms of of how each sort of piece of the organization plays a part and we're starting there with the executive and an executive sponsorship is just so essential. You know, a, a, someone in an executive role, role might typically take two, you know, they might be on a two year acceleration path. Well, it might take a startup two years to actually get from kind of where they are to a, to a commercial pilot or a rollout. So without that continuity of sponsorship, you know, they could, their success, or failure could be at the whim of one personal relationship. So the executive has a really important role of providing that continu continuity and the support and the appetite to to involve with is get involved in startups and not just see it as a bit of a flavor of the month thing. It needs it needs practice and longevity. More to say about that, but that's it at the executive level. Um, coming down one. Uh, culture and and you know we 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 can unpack culture quite quite a lot. Um, you know the the common way of describing it is the way we do things around here. Um, culture is about all the be collective behaviours in an organisation, and it really comes down from the board and executive through the organisation. But I, I'd like to define a um, an innovation culture is one in which there is a process for pushing the envelope 
for experimenting, for learning, and for not seeing, um, is for really re redefining what failure is. I think we get far too caught up with corporate careers where people say, oh, this didn't work. That's a, that's a blot on my career progression. I think a, a really healthy culture can ride that out. And we've got some, we've got some great examples in, in different sectors of organizations yeah. that, that do that really well. Coming down. Business units, and, and this, this is an area, we, we often have an innovation team uh, inside an organization, and this is where the orphan analogy can, can sort of take hold. Unless there is sponsorship from the business unit that actually has a, if you, if you will, owns the problem and has a vested interest in the success of the startup, this is where we can get that orphan syndrome. Um, you know, your innovation, department or business unit might have found the best startup in the world but if there's no engagement with the business units there's a bit of a risk of a not invented here sort of syndrome taking hold risk and I, you know we're living in a world where doing nothing not innovating is probably as risky i was presenting on this last week that there are so many external factors you know contributing to volatility uncertainty complexity ambiguity um that you know co large corporates that are dominant players in the market have got probably the biggest opportunity they've ever had with all the technological and social change going on but they're also probably the most vulnerable to to disruption by new entrants and those in turn by disruptive technologies so the idea of risk taking do it in it doing it in a controlled way and taking steps on an innovation journey rather than betting on the betting the farm on on a new idea i think that's part part of it actually feeds into the culture of an organization but a really mature appetite towards risk risk taking learning and not making risk and failure a part of a, a career path that doesn't get to the top of the organization critical critical thing yeah, uh, I, I've summarized those. There's a lot we can break out because even in the business units, there are business units that are front office own the problem. There are business units like finance and procurement. All have got a role to play. Sorry, Julia. No, I just wanted to add up a bit uh, here and there. Uh, some, you know, some practical example and um, things I've, I, I've, I saw during the programs I, I run, especially for executive. Uh, usually at Startup Bootcamp, when we do organize a proof of concept collaboration program, we end up this, uh, this collaboration with a demo day. So the demo day uh, is usually an event where all the startup collaborating, that has been collaborating with the corporate during the past three months, they go on stage and they present their proof of concept. What is the proof of concept about, but also what can be the future of the collaboration with the corporate in case they decide to move forward with a bigger you know commercial uh integration of the solution and some many times we, we with this corporate leader like we, we've been discussing uh but why do we need the demo day why it is important to make such a show and the the, the answer that they always give me is because it's very important to get closer to the leadership, to the executive of the part of the organization, uh, because then demo day, a lot of VPs, a lot of uh, directors with budget, budget owners, they come and see, and they, they are the ones that will take the decision to scale this collaboration up. And so this is why buying then the executive, um, and making them understand the collaboration was, you know, was uh, was good is 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 key because most of the time when we collaborate with uh, uh, with corporate, the person you know collaborating with the startup sometimes is not a budget owner. So it's very good through the collaboration to gain exposure within the company. Otherwise, uh, the risk that we run is just you know to have this collaboration lasting for two three months and not having an impact 
and not don't change anything within the corporate which is what we actually aim for because we don't collaborate with startup just for you know ticking a box or uh filling our sustainability report but because we want to actually change and bring some innovation that is long lasting and uh, i think this is mo the most difficult part after the collaboration helping them to scale more and uh, making the integration um making the post poc or the post collaboration or even the post acquisition um smoother so that was my my additional point to to the hurdles but i I think there are many. I don't know if anyone here from uh, from the audience wants to share any experience, and uh, maybe you can add it in the Mentimeter if you don't want to speak loud. But it would be very nice to hear some uh, some experiences, even if you're a startup or someone else from uh, the innovation ecosystem. Uh, would be nice to hear if you have any experience uh, and what is your feedback on collaborating with startups. I'm going to leave sometimes for questions, but um, we still have some uh, minutes together. This was uh, you know, just uh, me uh, and Stuart, we wanted to give you an overview of uh, corporate startup collaboration. And I mean, considering uh, Stuart experience only, and uh, not consider, and also mine, we could talk here for an hour, uh, actually more than uh, more than an hour about uh, about different programs and different experience. But we thought that next time would be nice to have actually some uh, guests uh, from our uh, from our ecosystem bringing here and in the webinar and talking about their experience about collaborating startup with a corporate and corporate with a startup. So we're going to have two uh, guests, one corporate, one startup founder. They're going to discuss about how their collaboration was and they're going to actually bring to life the words that me and Stuart have, uh, have shared today. Because uh, today we shared about the theory, what is open innovation and the messages yeah, open innovation and innovation itself is a big word and we are going to cover one topic per time. And now we're focusing on corporate startup collaboration. This was a bit of a theoretical session. And next time we're bringing this uh, collaboration to life with a fireside chat. Um, anyway, anything you want to see, you can uh, next, you can write it in the, in the group chat. Uh, I would love to see uh, and to hear from, uh, from you any input you can, uh, you can give. I, I see some Startup Bootcamp colleagues here. So don't hide if you want to share your experience collaborating with a startup for a corporate uh, that can be useful for our, for our uh, crowd. Please share. Otherwise, I will now skip and ask for questions. I see. I see one question. Um, so what I will I will ask this question. Maybe sure you can take it over. I will I will add. Um, what metrics should corporates focus on to measure their innovation activities? Yeah, great. What a great question, because uh, this is goes goes back to that um, take, taking a longer view. I think corporations can fall into the trap of jumping straight to a revenue measure or a, or a return on investment measure. Very often with startups, they're, they're actually solving a problem and going on a journey together. So I think some of the metrics um, that really need to be honed in on us, some of the milestones, some of the impacts, some of the outcomes that, that a startup is able to make, but not just to measure it in financial terms, right? So it, it can be um, 
actually whether a an agreed milestone through a pilot was being a, a, uh, achieved, um, which makes the piloting and POC process so crucial. Corporates often skip over that and try and jump to the end point without really going through the bits in between. And then, and then looking at that at a portfolio level, looking across all of their innovative activities and accepting that there will be a failure rate in there. Julie, I'm, I've no doubt you'd, you'd want to add something to that. Yeah, like I was thinking more than uh, metrics, I noticed something that aligns, um, you know, whoever does uh, innovation within the corporate with, um, you know, the, the, the goals of a corporate startup collaboration is having the person running the collaboration, having um, this uh, program or this collaboration within their uh, KPIs or OKRs. So I saw people having the collaboration within the OKRs and people not having the collaboration with the OKRs behaving completely differently uh, in the collaboration, meaning one person giving, you know, 50% of their FTE time to get the collaboration because they knew they were gonna be also evaluated on the result of that. And at the same time, people that, you know, they didn't have the alignment of this collaboration within their objectives and i mean they were taking it a bit so a, a bit lightly uh, and this is bad because then eventually we come back to the executive uh, um exposure if uh, if if the corp uh, if the, the 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 leaders of the company they see you're just doing this just for the sake of you know just doing the little uh project that doesn't that doesn't really look good because you you really want to to bring something to the company to the corporation with this collaboration and uh the best way to do it is to have your kpi aligned um with with the um, with the scope of uh, of the program we call it program because i talked about the poc program but can be again anything anything um it's and interesting we 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 get we we sort of talk to our corporate clients about thinking like a startup and everything you've said is is absolutely core to what we educate startups to do in terms of aligning milestones okrs with reward systems as well so it's a really nice um point you make julia i have another question um yeah, I think we already more or less uh, answered how important is uh, executive sponsorship to make innovation, innovate, over innovation a success. But I think uh, I, I think we covered that uh, we covered that a lot. I don't know if you have anything to add here. Might might just add that we we uh, I think I can mention that we worked with Aliander in in the Netherlands earlier this year, and I, I just wanted to give a shout out to the executive team because. There was sponsorship right across the organization. Um, they they came together around a plan around POCs, but they also problem solved. And you know, they kind of they walked the walk in terms of not just the plan on paper, but the way they behaved and the way they supported the business units and encouraged uh, the pilots to, to to proceed as well. I think it was a really strong living example of that. And I have a, another question, which is a bit different. I'm selecting uh, different questions. Uh, what role should procurement play in selecting and contracting with innovations and new technologies? Do you want, do you want me to go there first, Julian? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a really, it, it's an important role, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, and I think this is helpful to defining kind of the innovation journey. Once a, once a supply market's mature, procurement can issue an RFI and a tender and go and find one of you know a dozen mature businesses that can solve that. That's the classic role of procurement. Procurement has a really important role before that, before the solution sets have got to maturity, of creating a what I would call a light touch environment, right, where they're not putting onus uh, onerous uh, liability and insurance and other clauses uh, on an early stage that would just couldn't accommodate that level of, of procurement if you like overlay so they've got a really important role 
in creating the space that manages risks in a way but yeah. doesn't overly burden burden the uh, the the organization or the startup with with too much paperwork to yeah a better term. sometimes simplifying the contracts and uh, not being stuck you know this is our format 600 pages yeah i mean uh, these sometimes create uh, this is what creates uh sometimes a, a you know bad kickoff because startup seed is a long process and the collaboration is short and i mean in uh, in three months uh, if we lose one month just uh, doing paperwork then this can really can really impact the collaboration and uh so it's very important that procurement but even legal try to be flexible about this uh when we collaborate especially in a small scale because uh, then if it's a small scale also the paperwork need to be uh, small and uh, a bit more flexible and uh, maybe if uh, I, with with some with some corporation is not that easy uh, especially if you operate in a highly regulated uh, market because we also do uh, this kind of program with companies that are in market that are highly regulated but in some other companies maybe it, it may be a bit um, a bit easier and so that's why we need to be flexible we need to adapt and that's why also uh, we are here for a reason we're here to facilitate we're here to tell the startup please uh you know bear with us i'm gonna go around run, run you through all the paperwork and uh, also communicate to the corporate please make this quicker please make this shorter because otherwise you're going to lose the commitment from the, for the startup. Well, they also don't have enough money. They also need to go fast and they cannot spend months just reading paperwork. So most of the time POC, they have a budget, but sometimes they also have a very limited just uh, reimburse expense, uh, just reimbursing the uh, expenses or the hard costs. So for them, it's not nice if uh, you know you need to just stay stuck at the procurement phase for a month. Anything else? Let's see what I have. I think we're good. Anyone else from? Uh, um, otherwise, I think I will thank. Um, I will thank Stuart for it. I I hope this was interesting uh i am sure next one will be more interactive because we're going to have actually uh two guests here uh but please you can uh write me and um and stuart i'm gonna have here our email again uh if you want to send us suggestion what you would like to see um next and uh, we are here to listen to you and we would like to create a great series of webinar so thank you so much and uh, see you next time.